Hello guys and welcome back to Introduction to Number Theory. In this video we will begin moving towards the value of a continued fraction. First, let us remember what a continued fraction is. Well, it is an expression of the form a0 plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus well, 1 over and so on and so on. And this can be an infinite expression or it can, it can be finite. Well, we will write 1 over a n and plus and so on, meaning that actually we're interested in infinite continued fractions. Here a0 is an arbitrary integer and all of the other a's, a1, a2, a3, and so on, a n, are positive integers. Well, in order to get closer to the value of such an expression, we can consider parts of this expression. Well, for instance, a0, well, it's simply an integer or a0 plus 1 over a1, it's a rational number. Or we can consider the first three floors. Well, you understand what I mean. It is also a rational number. Actually, if we consider any finite part of this continued fraction, it will be a rational number because we know that finite continued fractions correspond to rational numbers. We denote this finite part as Pn over Qn. We call it a convergent. Well, a convergent is a rational number, a fraction that is obtained from the continued fraction by simply deleting everything after a nth. So we have, this is p0 over q0, p1 over q1, p2 over q2, and so on. So pn and qn are integers. Of course, when we say that we denote the denominator by p and the denominator by q, we assume that p and q are mutually prime, so that this fraction is irreducible. Let's write this down. Pn and Qn are mutually prime. Now, we remember that, well, finite continued fraction can be rolled up into a fraction of continuance. Let's write this down. We understand that uh, A0 plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus and so on but only to the a nth plus 1 over a nth in the end so finite continued fraction is equal to continuant of order n plus 1 of elements a0 a1 and so on a n over continuant of order n of a n to a1 to a n. And when we substitute uh, variables in continuous, continuous in the polynomial, when we substitute variables in continuous by numbers, we obtain an integer number. Well, this is an integer number, and this is also, the denominator is also an integer number, an integer. So we understand that fraction P over Q, Pn over Qn, is equal to the fraction K over K. But the question is, can we be sure that P 
is equal to k and q is equal to, well, k in the denominator. The only thing that can occur between p and q being equal to the continuance is if the continuance are not mutually prime, because we understand that the fraction p over q is equal to the fraction continuant over continuant. And this is an irreducible fraction, p over q, is the fraction that contains the continuance also irreducible. Are these two numbers mutually prime? This is the question now. And the answer is, yes, they are. In order to prove this, and this will also be the proof of these equalities. So this is a big question, and this is a small question. And both questions have positive answers. In order to prove this, uh, let's recall the recurrent equation that connects continuums k and plus 1. Well, I'll simply write it without variables. Uh, is equal to a0 uh, multiplied by kn plus kn uh, minus 1. So if these two continuums, actually these are already not continuous, but certain numbers, integers, if these two integers have common divisor, then this integer here is also divisible by this common divisor. Also, if these two integers have common divisor, then this integer here is divisible by this common divisor. So from this, we conclude that the greatest common divisor of kn plus 1 and kn is the same as the greatest common divisor of kn and kn minus 1. Because these two integers, this pair of integers and this pair of integers simply have the same sets of common divisors. Since this equality can be continued, all we need to check is whether the first two continuants are mutually prime or not. But the first two continuants, let's re recall, uh, the first one is uh, k0, and k0 is simply equal to 1. And the second one is k1, and k1 is simply equal to, well, it's variable. So it's some integer, let's say x, but it, they are certainly mutually prime. So we can conclude that all neighbor continuums such as these are mutually prime. Therefore, these continuums are, continuums are also mutually prime, and these equalities indeed hold. This is true.